Yeah, by the way, um, when we were doing rehearsal, Tom saw Scott Hendricks in his video and said, next year, I want a video, right? Um, yeah. Envy, powerful emotion, right? Um, but I have no doubt that he's going to do so many impressive things with these solutions that we're going to want to create a lot of videos. And so I, I talked about the partnership. We, we had a nice little chat. We're going to work together. And we have three things that we want to work with all of you on. And this is going to be our focus. Go-to-market strategy, right? Sounds complicated. You throw the word strategy in, and suddenly everything you know, gets complicated. It's really simple. We see three core elements. So the first one is brand strategy. As I've mentioned before, it's critical that your brand strategy is aligned to your purpose. So all the things that we heard about sustainability from Tom, that's got to be front and center. It's not on some web page hidden on your website. When people see you and they say, well, who is this organization? Your purpose has to come through. The second is the offering strategy, and that's got to align to your customers' needs. The worst thing you can do is you put an offer in front of someone and it talks about yourself. I have a gig, I have fiber. You want to make sure that the offering speaks to the needs of the buyer. And the third one is your campaign strategy. You want to make sure that your campaign strategy gets you in front of people where they live, digital, social, et cetera. People are going to be able to go and find you. You're going to be able to find them. But you have to have a campaign strategy where you're doing that through things like your mobile app every single day. So last year, we spent a long time on brand strategy. I mentioned it yesterday, right? Liquid death, right? Again, a water company, right? What's more of a commodity than water? And they built an incredibly successful business because they tied their brand to their purpose, death to plastic. And they did it in an amazing, amazing way. And by the way, what was really interesting last year was how many people sent me pictures when they were in stores for Halloween displays, right? It's, like, it's almost like we all as a community discovered this together at Connections last year. Uh, and I was just really, really thrilled that uh, you remembered something from Connections. So for those of you who sent me those pictures, thank you. Uh, it, it was really, really great. But this year, we're going to focus on something that I actually think is more critical to our community, the offering strategy. Why? Because this is the moment of truth. This is when somebody has found you, and they want to know if what you have is right for them. This is where they make a commitment, sometimes a long-term commitment to you. And when people make that decision, you want to make it super easy. You want to make it a no-brainer. So how do we do that? Well, you came to a technical conference. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit of biology here. And you know, last night, I stayed at the Wynn, not a Holiday Inn, so hang with me. I'm going to try my best. But the amygdala is a really interesting part of your brain, right? Um, it's you know, part of your limbic system. It controls emotion and, more importantly, behavior, right? And we've studied this for over a century, right? And there's all kinds of research on behavior and what drives it and decision making. And I know all of us here, you know, we have a lot of very data-driven people, engineers, right? And we all think, oh, we make a buying decision, we look at the facts, we study the data, we look at the features, we make a price comparison, and we make a very rational decision. The truth is, we don't. Right? If you look at the research that's out there, it basically says our decisions are driven by emotion. So uh, Gerald Zaltman wrote this book, one of the people who've um, you know, really, really looked at this. And, and basically what he summarized was 90 to 95% of our decisions are made based on emotion. Right? That's what the behavioral research says. But here's the really fascinating part. We've evolved, we're so smart, what do we do? We then go compile all the facts in our head to justify that decision. So we're convinced at the end of the day that, oh, that was a super rational decision. But that's because we came to that conclusion 
after our motion had already made the decision for us. It's an incredible, incredible phenomenon. By the way, the word amygdala hijack, that was actually coined by Daniel Gelman in his term. That's actually, if you've heard anything about this, you probably heard the term amygdala hijack. And the reason it's called that is because that's what the amygdala does. It actually formed as part of the system that helped us with fight or flight as we were you know, you know, coming through and evolving. And when it hijacks the system, it does that before your logical prefrontal cortex is even getting engaged. So I wanna share a little bit of an example of how this works. I apologize, I didn't do my yoga last night. Ugh. So, basketball sneaker. So this is a Converse Chuck Taylor. Now, our crack agency decision council told me that this would show up better than the one that I liked when I played basketball in junior high school. This is Laker yellow. I grew up in New England. I had Celtic green, right? Why? Well, because I wanted to be like Larry Bird, right? Now, the rational part of my brain, even at 12 years old, told me, you're probably not gonna be Larry Bird, right? Well, first of all, my father was my height, so that should have been a sign. However, I wanted to be like Larry, right? And here's the really interesting thing. When we buy products and services, we're not buying a product or service. We're trying to buy a better version of ourself. That's fundamentally what we're doing. We wanna find someone or something that's going to make us do things better and be better at what is important to us. And that's what I was doing. Now let's fast forward to today, right? Ah, there we go. So here's a nice new modern sneaker, right? That one, not a lot of support, very flimsy. This one, this is an $83 New Balance Kawhi, right? Space age polymers, all kinds of support, amazing, right? is as good as any basketball shoe on the market. It's really phenomenal, right? So what's this one? Okay, this one is the LeBron. The LeBron, LeBron 20, right? Probably made in the same factory as that one, right? The number one selling basketball shoe retails for $225. No better than that one. And by the way, Kawhi, he's pretty good. But he's not the king. I wanna be like, this isn't even a good looking shoe, right? <laughs> if I wore this, my kids, oh my God, they would kill me, right? But even though most people who buy basketball sneakers know they're not gonna be LeBron, they would really like to be like LeBron. So, this really gets interesting when you look at this one. This is the Air Jordan OG1 that you can have for the great price of $52,000. Now, I wanted to bring one here, but Michael told me I couldn't expense it. <laughs> College tuition, basketball shoe, right? When people see this, they're not making a rational decision. This one's pretty clear but this actually plays into the decisions that people make about everything, every day, including your service. 